Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Clayton, and today we're going to explain cholesterol ratios. You may have gotten your cholesterol checked lately, and your doctor is looking at the non HDL cholesterol or the total cholesterol to HDL ratio, or maybe even the triglycerides to HDL ratio. And I'm going to explain what these ratios mean, what you should be looking for, and give you some general guidelines for how to interpret these tests and then start to improve them without having to take medications. My name is Dave Clayton. This is Cholesterol Mastery, where my job is to help you improve your cholesterol without taking medication. So let's start with a look at the measures that are on our cholesterol panel. So when you get your cholesterol test, you're going to see four main measures. One is triglycerides, which is essentially fat in the bloodstream. Number two is your LDL, which is your bad cholesterol. HDL, which is your good cholesterol. And then your total cholesterol. Now, because of the limitations of our testing, triglycerides is another way to approximate cholesterol. You see, all cholesterol is transported around the body on these carrier molecules called lipoproteins. Now, two of those are on our panel. They're HDL and LDL. Uh, that's high-density lipoprotein and low-density lipoprotein. But there's a couple of more lipoproteins that carry bad cholesterol, but they carry more triglycerides than they do cholesterol. So what we do is we do a little bit of a calculation and we look at the amount of triglycerides and the amount of LDL and HDL, and then we calculate out the total cholesterol. Now you can also measure LDL directly and you can also back out LDL from your total cholesterol and your triglycerides. Um, but these are ways that we measure the amount of bad cholesterol and good cholesterol. And then the ratios are ways that we just kind of process those numbers to look at different ways to present that information to help you make decisions about your risk for a heart attack or a stroke. Now, in general, we can look at triglycerides and LDL as representing all of the bad cholesterol. We can also look at good cholesterol as being the only, uh, uh, we can also look at HDL as being the only good cholesterol on the cholesterol panel. So what we want to see is a lot of HDL, a lot of good cholesterol, and less of the LDL and the triglycerides. Now, we're not going to want those to go to zero. We need them in our body to get cholesterol and fats where they need to go. But we want those as low as possible and HDL as high as possible. And in fact, when you look at the normal ranges for, or the optimal ranges, I should say, for all of these, you'll see that they all center around kind of a 40 to 50 level. So if we look at an LDL that's perfect, it's below 70. So let's call it 50. If we look at triglycerides in their optimal range, they should be really low, around 40 or 50. If we look at a really good HDL, it's after it exceeds 40 and it gets into the 50, 60 range that we call it a really good level of good cholesterol. So when we look across the cholesterol panel, we want to see low levels of bad cholesterol and high levels of that good HDL cholesterol. So with that in mind, let's look at some of the ratios that your doctor may be looking at. Now, the first uh, metric that they may point you towards is your non-HDL cholesterol. And when we look at this, we just take the good cholesterol, we subtract it from total cholesterol, and what's left is non-HDL. And that's a good way to approximate all of the bad cholesterol that's out there. Uh, a good level of non-HDL is under 130, and a bad level would be, of course, anything over 130. So this is an important measure, and it gives you an idea for whether you need to bring down your triglycerides or your LDL and start moving that in the right direction. But what it doesn't do is capture the protective effect of HDL, which is your good cholesterol. Now, what I mean is that if you had two people, one with a good cholesterol of 30, and one with a good cholesterol of 50, they would have different cardiovascular risk because the guy with the low HDL is more at risk of a heart attack because he doesn't have as much of that great good cholesterol that's pulling cholesterol out of the arteries and cleaning out those artery walls and, and really helping the heart stay healthy. Um, but they might have the same amount of non-HDL cholesterol. So non-HDL is a good way to look at bad cholesterol, but it doesn't really capture the protective effect of good cholesterol when we're looking at our overall risk. 
Um, so two people with the same non-HDL level may have different risk based on their level of HDL. Okay, so that's how to look at your non-HDL cholesterol measure. Now let's look at the two main ratios that we may see. Uh, the most common is total cholesterol to HDL. So if we look at that measure, uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna divide the total cholesterol by HDL. And of course, it's another way of saying the same thing, which is that if, you're, if you have higher levels of bad cholesterol, that ratio is gonna be higher. And if you have lower levels of good cholesterol, that ratio is gonna be higher. And higher ratios are of course worse. What you wanna do is you wanna have your total cholesterol be less and have more of that made up of good cholesterol and less of bad cholesterol. So ideally, you wanna have that ratio to be less than 3.5. So you wanna have about 3.5 times as much total cholesterol as you do good cholesterol. And that's usually a good kind of cutoff in terms of risk. Now, lower ratios are, of course, better. So if that were 2 to 1 or 1.8 to 1 or 1.5 to 1, it means that you got more and more of that good cholesterol and less and less of the bad. Um, if we see ratios that are much above 3.5, so if your ratio was 5 or 6 or 7 to 1, then you know you've got way too much bad cholesterol and way too little good cholesterol, and we got to work on all of that. And of course, if you're looking at improving these ratios, uh, like and subscribe to this channel so that we can keep sending you more tips on how to improve your HDL, your LDL, your triglycerides and get your panel to look optimal and put you in the lowest risk uh, category uh, without having to take a bunch of unnecessary medications. Now the last ratio and probably the least common used is triglycerides to HDL. And the reason why that one comes up is that the same factors that raise your triglycerides are also the ones that reduce your HDL. So when you look at people who have a high carbohydrate diet, they're not getting the right amounts of healthy fats and uh, other lifestyle factors that are contributing to a low HDL and a high triglycerides, it's gonna be really glaring as those two numbers start to diverge that we need to make some changes. Um, and again, higher uh, ratios of triglycerides to HDL are worse, uh, you definitely want to see that more like a one-to-one -one ratio. And as you get into a three-to-one or a four-to-one ratio, you're increasing your risk dramatically. Um, so that's a good way to think about the ratios. And what I want to do next is just give you a couple of different examples of people who might have uh, high or different ratios based on their amounts of LDL, HDL, and triglycerides and then let you see kind of how if we improve our panel it really comes down to the same steps which is let's raise the amount of good cholesterol and let's lower the amounts of triglycerides and ldl and those steps uh, we're going to go into more detail as we get uh, on this channel i'm going to show you different ways that you can move all those metrics in the right direction okay so let's take a look at a couple of different people uh, kind of example cases here all right, so let's try one guy with really bad cholesterol. Now I say guy, it could be guy or girl. Um, but in this case, the total cholesterol is 220, LDL is 150, triglycerides are 200, HDL is 30. Now, these are the numbers that you're gonna get back on your cholesterol test. And if we look at what the ratios look like, the non-HDL number is 190. And that's way more than the 130 that we said is the cutoff. So this is definitely gonna get flagged. And it's another way to say with one metric that you need to improve your, L improve your HDL and reduce your LDL at the same time. So in this case, your non-HDL level is 190. And it's a good way of showing that whether you're looking at triglycerides or LDL, you've got too much bad cholesterol kicking around and we've got to bring that down. And it's only when we look at whether that's made up mostly of triglycerides or LDL that we'll know exactly uh, what steps we need to do because reducing triglycerides is a little different than reducing LDL. Um, and we'll get into that in more detail later. Um, now your triglycerides to, uh, or your, sorry, your total cholesterol to HDL level is 7.3 in this case. Now we said that 3.5 is good, levels like four, five, six to one are worse. At 7.3, it's clear that you're in a very high risk category with a total cholesterol to HDL uh, ratio uh, in this range. 
Okay, now that's a clearly bad case uh, in terms of not only the absolute amounts of HDL, LDL, and triglycerides, but also the ratios of total cholesterol to HDL and also the total non-HDL cholesterol level. Uh, now let's look at somebody who's got a really or a good cholesterol uh, profile and let's look at their ratios. So in this case, total cholesterol is 170, LDL is 100, triglycerides are also 100, and HDL is 50. So if we look at the ranges in terms of what are good levels, uh, I picked numbers here that kind of hit the cutoffs on what is a good number uh, without getting into the great ranges. Um, now in this case, your non-HDL comes in right under 130, it's 120. Um, so in terms of non-HDL, we're saying the same thing here as we did with each of the individual measurements by saying that your total bad cholesterol is in a good range. Um, and then your total cholesterol to HDL level is also right about where it should be. It's at 3.4, which is just under the cutoff of 3.5. So what we see is that if our LDL, triglycerides, and HDL are in ranges where we generally see those as being good numbers, our ratio and our total, our uh, non-HDL cholesterol level all come out to be right around the same good level. And then just for comparison, let's look at what I would consider to be an optimal uh, cholesterol panel. In this case, total cholesterol is 145, LDL is 70, triglycerides are 50, and HDL is 65. Uh, so in each of these cases, we've picked numbers uh, that represent really good ranges for LDL, HDL, and triglycerides. And our ratio reflects that as we see that our total cholesterol to HDL ratio is 1.8, well below the 3.5 that we said was a cutoff. At 1.8, we're doing great. Our total cholesterol is barely twice our HDL. Um, Non-HDL cholesterol, we said the cutoff was 130. In this case, with optimal numbers, non-HDL comes in at 80. So if we look at a bad cholesterol profile, a good cholesterol profile, and a great cholesterol profile, what we see is that whether we look at the individual ranges for LDL, HDL, or triglycerides, or whether we look at the ratio or the amount of non-HDL cholesterol, all of it tells the same story. What we wanna see is less of the bad stuff, the triglycerides and the LDL, and more of the good stuff, which is the HDL. If you wanna learn more about how to move your numbers in the right direction, I encourage you to like and subscribe to this channel because we're gonna keep sending you great information on how you can improve all of these metrics and move your cholesterol into the optimal range without taking medication. And if you wanna go all in, check out our website at rx5.com where we've got cholesterol mastery programs that will help you improve your LDL, HDL, and triglycerides by giving you online education, support, and coaching to help you make the step-by-step -step changes to your lifestyle that you need to improve your numbers without taking medications. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you next time. This is Cholesterol Mastery. Thanks for watching and good luck.